Okay, well, let's get started. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I think, uh, I don't know, the, the world seems to be trundling along um, as it was. Uh, so I guess um, today we're going to do a little bit of uh, stability stuff. All right. I mean, we're going to finish, we're going to more or less finish up the stability stuff. Okay. So we had at the end, um, we had some you know, sort of revelations, I would say, uh, about uh, how to think about stability. Um, so I just want to go over sort of what those all mean. Okay. Um, hey, do you guys have, do you have other homeworks due? Maybe people are doing their homework or something for other classes. Is that possible? No, impossible. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna internally, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that as my internal narrative. I can't, I can't condense the, the idea that people would simply not come for no reason. They would not do that. Um, but of course, you can watch it afterwards. So you know, it's the big deal. Um, so I guess, well, whatever, maybe they'll file in. Um, okay, so I, sorry, I got, I sidetracked myself there. Um, so we're gonna do the stability stuff. All right. Uh, Okay, so let me just jump into what we were doing last time. Okay, so here, uh, let's let's scroll back a little bit. Okay, so essentially we're, we're we're kind of working with this linear system. Okay, so we're still we're still technically in a linear system, and at the end we're going to be like, oh well, you can just linearize around steady state in a nonlinear system, so it's all cool. All right, so we're going to do mostly everything in a linear system, and then at the end, well, actually we're going to apply to Ramsey, and when we do that, we need to think a little bit about how to linearize. Okay, so. Uh, but for now, we're just going to kind of assume we have a linear system and then, and then work from there. Okay, so, but essentially what we do is, um, <clears throat> well, we start out, what do we got here? Uh, the one thing, I mean, the, the one thing I didn't write here was just the original formulation of the system, which I'm going to sort of confusingly write on the right-hand side. Okay, oops. We need white marker. Okay, so here we go. Um, the, or, the original system was just ax plus b. Okay, so what we did was we started with this. All right, so this was like our starting point. Then we went over to the left-hand side. If you go over to the left-hand side of the tilde world was, you know, basically here, um, was we, we look at deviations from steady state. Okay, so that's what, in general, I mean, we're going to look around steady state. So maybe we have a tailor expand there when we go nonlinear. So we're going to look at deviations from steady state. Okay, um, and that... Yeah, and so then once you do that, you get this law of motion, okay, which tells you how things move around in that deviations from steady state space, okay, and then it's just the B disappears. So B's gone, it's just A, all right? So we just have a, a matrix, which just tells us where things move around, okay? And so if you wanna, um, let's see, so uh, th this is just a linear map, okay? So this is saying you have some deviation from steady state, okay? And there's a linear function that, that gives you, as a function of like your two coordinates, it gives you sort of where you're going, okay? Are you going up or down in the first dimension or are you going up or down in the second dimension? I'm, I'm gonna, we're in n dimensions here, okay? So this is general, but I'm gonna speak uh, intuitively in two dimensions, okay? So, so you have some two dimensional space and then this uh, thing on the top left, this x tilde law of motion tells you where you're moving around and it's centered around the origin because we're centered around steady state now, okay? Um, and then, uh, yeah, so it, it's, um, Let's see. So you, you're gonna you're gonna have four quadrants, right? Whether you know, uh, coordinate one is going up or down, crossed with whether coordinate two is going up or down. Okay, and because it's linear, okay, it's there's gonna be a line. This is where pictures are helpful. There's gonna be a line. Okay, uh, let me think. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. So so at zero, right? We know that we're not moving around. Okay. So that's that's the whole point of centering it. Okay. And there's gonna be one line that sort of says, okay, on, on one side of this line here, you know, maybe maybe uh, uh, x1 dot is positive, x1 tilde dot is positive, and then the other side, it's negative. Okay, so there's gonna be a, a line that separates where things are where, where things are moving up for one coordinate, where, where they're moving the other way for another. And there's gonna be another line, oh dear, it just like randomly turns into an eraser. Um, okay, and there's gonna be another line. So this is like uh, for, for the, you know, coordinate number one, this is for coordinate number two, that delineates where we're moving up or down in coordinate two space, okay? But remember, you know, if, if you if you look, think about this as like 
you know, writing out a 2D matrix with a, a vector and you do the matrix multiplication and you set that to zero, right? It's going to give you a, a linear relationship between x1 and x2, and the, but there's going to be two of those, right? So they're, they're mapped onto the same 2D space, okay? So, um, but what this gives you is uh, quadrants, again, in quotes because they're not square, but, you know, you're going to have region one, say, region two, region three, and region four. Okay, I'm using Roman numerals because... I don't know. It's fun. And also I already use numbers. Okay. So you're going to have quadrants where it's like, you know, uh, in, in quadrant one, you know, maybe they're both positive. Okay. And so we'd be moving like this. Okay. I you know, if, if I drew it exactly kind of like how it's going to look for Ramsey, you know, it'd look something like this where you, you're moving, uh, sort of diag. Oops. That's not, is that, no, this is actually a weird, no, this is, this is actually, you're just, is this even possible? Okay, I, did, I drew this wrong. Let's 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 back up. Okay, so if it were like Ramsey, one more, it would look like this, where you're kind of moving inwards on these diagonals, okay, and then outwards. Um, oh dear, uh, on the off diagonals. Okay, so you're going in on those thin cones, right, and then you're you're going out uh, on the on the off diagonals. Okay, so but. but Whatever the case, there's going to be um, these these four quadrants because you have you know two plus or minus options crossed together. You get four quadrants. Okay. And the only difference is that they're going to be exactly linear because this is a linear map. These these lines are actually straight lines. Okay. As opposed to in Ramsey, they're they're general. Okay. And when we linearize Ramsey, they're they're going to be approximately straight lines. Okay. So that's how you can think about. It. Yep. Yeah. So this is. This is like x tilde one, x tilde two. Yep. And then the arrows denote what the value of x dot tilde is. Yeah, or x tilde dot, right? So, um, okay, so that's that's our space. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so you can see uh, if, well, first of all, it, it's not square. I mean, these quadrants are not like quadrants, like, you know, when you're doing high school geometry, right? So they're, they're, sort of like that, but they're kind of smushed, right? So um, what we need to do is, is fix that, and that's what V does. Okay, so V fixes that. V kind of like stretches it out and makes, it basically rotates it so that um, these are now quadrants. And so that if we, if, if we, let me just, like, if, you, if you look at how do we construct V, remember we said X hat was equal, or X hat, X hat is equal to V inverse times X tilde, and V, that matrix, is the matrix of eigenvectors stacked horizontally. Okay, so V is, is a particular matrix that, that we can compute, okay, that we're then a, applying to this to get into X hat space. X hat space now is really like a, you know, a, a square space, okay? And if we want to go, if we start in X hat space and choose a coordinate, then we can map it back into X tilde space, and then it, and we can even map back into X space by just adding on that steady state, okay? So just the, if you want to think about it, you know, the if you think about what is X tilde, well, that's just V times X hat, right? So just move the V over to the other side. X tilde is V times X hat. Okay, so um, yeah, so so that's that, I mean that, that geometrically that's what we're doing. We're we're recentering and restretching. Okay, so that we're in like a, a square space. Okay, um, and the good thing is that you know we we sort of okay we did this eigen value eigen vector stuff eigen stuff got this decomposition right A can be decomposed into V times this lambda times V inverse, okay? And then we use that to transform the variables and then we'll into X hat, this rotated space. And we'll look at how X hat moves around, you know, basically from here, let me just point out my cursor. Uh, if we look at how X hat moves around, you know, okay, so that's gonna be V inverse times X tilde, just taking the derivative of this equation. And then uh, if we know that X tilde dot, is a times x tilde, right? And then we just plug in there, okay? Um, and then we could plug in for a, there's two ways. We could we could rearrange this and, and plug in here, say that v inverse a is equal to lambda v inverse, or we could plug in for a, so we get a, we get v inverse times v times lambda times v inverse. Either way, the v inverses are gonna cancel a little bit, and so we're gonna get lambda v inverse x tilde. Last thing is that this V inverse X tilde is actually X hat. Okay, so you just like subbing in for these different rules, 
you know, at the end of the day, we get this equation, which is sort of our, our big result, is that x hat moves around nicely, right? x hat moves is, is just the, the x hat dot is lambda times x hat. And since lambda, capital lambda, is a diagonal matrix, right? That means it's separable. So when people when people talk about a diagonalizable system or a diagonalized system, they're sort of talking an analogy to a to a matrix, right? Saying that you can talk about how each of these coordinates moves around independently of each other. Okay, so it's separable, and that's good because it makes our lives easier. We don't have to worry about these complex interactions, even if they are only linear. Uh, uh, you know, mucking things up, right? So. Um, we can we can just do things separately. Okay, so we've now diagonalized the system is what I'm saying basically. All right um, And lambda is just a number, okay, so okay, so the, the, the last step is say we've diagonalized the system Okay uh, That means we can write we don't need matrices anymore to, to write it concisely. We can just say for each I the derivative over time of x hat sub i is lambda i times the value x i hat, all right, separately for each i. Okay, so that's that's the key is that <clears throat> we know how to describe things in x hat space very simply. Uh, once we've, dis if we describe them in x hat space, remember, this means um, that x i hat of t is just x i hat of zero times e to the lambda i t. That is, we know how to solve those types of differential equations. They're just exponentials with an initial condition. Okay. So we know if we know x hat i, I zero, we know the whole path of x i hat. Okay. Then we can get the whole path of x tilde hat by reapplying that v, like basically right here. We, we if we know x hat path, we can reapply v and get x tilde. And then, which which unrotates it, and then we can add on the steady state, oops, uh, and get the the actual full path if we want. Okay, so uh, um, we can we can basically solve the whole thing. Okay, we just need to know where we start. Okay, so it's a little bit of a circle because if you know if I give you Ramsey, I say where do we start? You know, we'll start at some k c value, say. All right. Um, it's k zero c zero. Let, let's let's forget about choosing c for a second. We're in phase space. We're just starting at k zero c zero, or or x one zero x two zero if you want in this mathematical notation. Then so we that's our real like initial condition that we're given. We can map that through tilde by recentering it around steady state and map it in a hat space. Okay, by using the eigenvector uh, matrix. Then we know x hat zero. Okay, and, and and then we can do this separable uh, path, and then we can map it back to real space. Okay, so we take our initial condition, map it into to funny but simple, you know, exponential space, get the whole path, remap everything back. We actually want to do something with it in the real world, right? So, or like the quote unquote real world, um, uh, it's still not quite real. It's just a slightly more realistic model. So we can map it back into that space. Okay, and then talk about stuff. Okay, so so that's that's the dynamic. Okay, so we can do that, um, but first let's think about what are the implications of this. Okay, and this is what I was talking about at the end is that um, these exponentials. Okay, so uh, first of all, if if things diverge in hat space, they're gonna diverge basically in, generally in tilde space and and x regular x space. Okay. So we kind of want to not have things diverge, right? We we want to converge to a steady state, all right? And so if if we and so things diverging happens when the lambdas are positive, right? If the lambdas are negative, we're good. They converge to zero. That's our steady state notion. Um, that's that's great. If they're positive though, they will diverge. That means if we want to ensure convergence. Uh, for a given, you know, for whatever um, initial condition, we need to make it so that whenever lambda i is positive, whenever we have these exploding exponentials here, right here, when these lambda i's are positive, then we're going to just set the initial condition to zero and, and eliminate that possibility. Okay, so that's that's um, it's a choice. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a choice basically. Okay, but it, it also describes the space. Okay, so if we say 
that whenever the lambda lambda i's are positive, that those initial x's x hats have to be zero. That still leaves the, the negative ones that can be whatever we want. All right, and that really will, will describe our initial conditions. Okay, so um, uh, let's see. Yeah, so what does that mean? Well, that means that the dimensionality. Okay, you can think about a, uh, what's called a stable manifold around steady state. Okay, so um, I guess I can draw it. Yeah, so 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 think about this picture up on the right here. All right. Um, you can, uh, the stable manifold is the set of points that converge to state state, right? So in, in like Ramsey style world, and it's a little cramped here, but it there would be some stable arm say going through here. And we can say that, you know, as long as you start on that stable arm, you're going to converge to steady state. Okay. it's a little, uh, yep. Okay. So as long as you start on that stable arm, you're going to converge to steady state. All right. If you start anywhere else, if you start here, you're going to go off wherever. Okay, even if you start a little bit off of it, you're going to kind of curve around and, and do something like that. Okay, so um, there in Ramsey, we, we kind of intuited that there's going to be some stable arm. Okay, and what's interesting about this arm or this manifold really is that it's one dimensional. It can, it can be parameterized by one continuous variable. Okay, um, now we can think of other possibilities. Okay, so another possibility, I guess, which I'll draw down here is... Um, Let's, okay, so these are supposed to cross the origin. Okay, uh, the, the other possibility, I guess I should do this, um, is that we have arrows that look like this. Well, there's many possibilities, but another possibility is this. So we have arrows that look like this. Okay, so this, all right, um, everything is pointing in. It's a bowl, basically, if you want to think about it like that, right? So if this is a saddle, because it's like high, like a horse's saddle like this, but then it falls off on the sides. That thing on the right the saddle, this is a bowl, okay? Just with the gravitational analogy. Um, and so here, uh, everything just goes to the center, okay? And so then the stable manifold is is two-dimensional. You can start anywhere, and you're just gonna be like, oh, ended up in the center, fancy that, all right? So you're gonna, whatever you do, you're gonna end up in the, the, the steady state, okay? So that means the stable manifold is just the whole space, basically, uh, within reason, so, and that's two-dimensional, okay? And if you computed the eigenvalues for this other system that I'm proposing, they would both be negative, okay? Because it doesn't matter what you, what you do, you can choose any x hat, one, two, negative eigenvalues are gonna bring you back to the steady state. Mm -hmm. um, let me think. So the, the vectors are, the nulls, they're, they're where each individual x hat is zero. So they're, they're where, I mean, the, the, those are, you know, it's like where xi hat dot equals zero. Okay, so um, let me think. So, so you know, in, in the two-dimensional case, okay, so it would be like, uh, you know, if you have, so x dot is, is ax, right? So then, um, yeah, so we have like a one one, a one two, a two one. Um, oops. So it's really just sort of evaluating this. Oops. Okay, and then these should be hats. Or actually, these are, these are tildes at this point. Okay, so it's just evaluating these. Um, and so it, you know, a you know. Let's write the first. So, so a one one x one tilde plus a one two x two tilde. All right, and setting that equal to zero basically, and you know x two is you know a a one one over a one two times x one. Okay, so it's it's a ray coming off from the origin with slope, which is just going to be the ratio of I guess in this case a one one to a one two. So it's a function of the matrix elements basically, uh, kind of row by row. All right. Um, the eigen, it should, uh, there's probably a relation to the eigenvectors. It might even, I don't know, if, I don't know if it's actually the eigenvector literally. It might be like perpendicular to it or something. I can't remember, honestly. Um, uh, but there's got to be some relationship. I, I don't know what it is off the top of my head though. Yeah. Yeah. I'll think about that though. Um, if I, if I, if I discover anything, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know. All right. 
Um, because, yeah, because the, the eigen, that V inverse transition transformation is, is undoing these, so it, sh it should be related to the rays in, in some way, okay? It's, it's basically taking them and pushing these to the axes and making it a square space in this case, all right? So, um, that sounds plausible. Um, yeah, so, yes. Yeah, it, it's it, it's related, but I don't think it's exactly them. I can't, I can't remember though. Um, and and just a note about eigenvectors, which is going to be useful later, uh, is that the the eigenvectors um, there's a scale issue. You know, like with prices, we don't know what's the scale of prices. You can shift them all up and down uniformly. If you look at this uh, an eigen uh, value eigenvector equation like this, you can multiply the v by a cons a scalar. Not going to change that equation. So there, there's a scale issue, an overall scale issue. So if you want to think about normalized, you can, you could, you could do a two norm or something, uh, or you could just choose it however it's convenient for you. So, so that's going to be relevant in a bit. All right. So just, just keep that in mind. Okay. So, um, all right. So that that's the stable manifold, right? So the stable manifold could be one D, could be two D. Um, <clears throat> if you if you flip this bowl upside down, right? A super unstable system, everything just diverges. Then it's just there's one point, and you better hope you end up on that top of, top of the bowl and don't move at all, right? So um, that is where there's a zero dimensional stable manifold. It's just a point, right? So um, those are more or less the three options, right? Is it one, two, or three in, in a two D system? Okay, and it just depends on those. Those in that case, the uh, both eigenvalues would be positive. Okay, so um, all right, so then. Uh, that's the dimensionality of the manifold. That's sort of a result, okay? And and that's why for us, a saddle path is good because we want to have a 1D manifold. We want to have for a given K, there's only one exact C that you would want to choose. Otherwise, things get a little goofy, all right? So um, that, that's why we want that, all right? Um, okay, so now we can... Um, we, 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 should do, we should apply this to Ramsey now, okay? So, so we, I think we've more or less... Work everything out, okay, and we can we can now think about what's what's happening with Ramsey. All right, okay. So to do that, right, um, we need to linearize Ramsey. Okay, so actually, I do have a bit in the uh, slides about um, okay. For some reason, the slides just seem different. They're the same. I know there's a font issue. Okay, so uh, in the slides, what do I have? Yeah, I have, if you want to linearize it. Okay, so so for, let, let's just talk about linearization in general for a second, and then we can actually do it. Okay, so uh, linearization is if you have some more general system, which I'm going to call g of x of t. So now um, I'm writing, before I wrote, I think, lowercase g, now I'm writing capital G because it's a, it's a vector equation, right? So we're, we're in multiple dimensions, okay? So this is just some general equation mapping from a vector, <clears throat> say column vector x, uh, into a vector through this g to x dot, okay? So in the, case, in the linear case, it's just a times x for, for a matrix, a square matrix a, but in general, it could be nonlinear, okay? Um, all right, so that's cool. Uh, what we can do is... If we want to linearize this, then we would just say that around uh, steady state. Okay, so first of all, there's some steady state. Um, hopefully, you know, in a nonlinear system, there's not too much you can say. All right, uh, but let's just say that there's some steady state x star. Okay, and we're going to linearize around that. So if we do that, we're just going to evaluate the Jacobian at x star. Okay, and then multiply it by uh the deviation from steady state right so we take we, we evaluate the jacobian so for each um remember that g outputs a vector of x dots okay and so we got a column vector say and then along the input dimensions we also take derivatives okay so the first row is the derivative of all those outputs with respect to the first coordinate the sorry column the second column is the derivative with respect to the second coordinate and so on and so on but it's because you know, the number of inputs is equal to the number of outputs. This is a square matrix, the Jacobian, all right? We're going to evaluate the Jacobian 
in general, the Jacobian is a function, right? It's a matrix that's a function of where you are in the state space. It's complicated, right? We're going to value it at steady state, so now it's just a matrix, right? Basically, it's A. Right, that's, that's going to stand in for our A, okay? And then we're multiplying it by the deviation from steady state. Okay, so we're kind of doing that center recentering automatically with this. We're saying we're doing uh, we're doing the Taylor expansion around steady state, which the the one D Taylor expansion is or the one term Taylor expansion is uh, first order. I guess we call it is uh, uh, just that term. In general, we'd, we'd have you know a second you know a, well, I guess it would be um, fairly complicated, but we'd have we have higher order terms. Okay, second derivative terms. Uh, and, and adding on that, but we'll just do the 1D linear, okay? Um, okay, so then, uh, this phrase isn't first order, that, that's the new Star Wars thing. Not like, that's like the name of the enemy in the new Star Wars. Yeah, I always thought it was funny, because when, you know, when I think of first order, I think of first order condition, or first order Taylor expansion. But no, now they're evil. Um, so, okay, yeah. From their perspective, you're evil. Yeah, okay. A little bit of moral relativism. Okay, sorry. Oh yeah, they are. They were okay. That's a valid. That is a very valid point. I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, all right. So we're gonna linearize this, and, and that's pretty much it, right? It's just you know, you, you got you, the Jacobian is a now. All right, and we can do this. All right, so let's. Yeah, that's it. So, so let's let's do Ramsey, all right? Um, <clears throat> okay, so we need the we need the the what are the Ramsey equations? Let me just pull these up real quick. Uh, do I want to? We're gonna do. Let's just do the the full fully general. There, there's no reason. I mean, I was thinking maybe I'll, I'll kill off population growth or something, but we don't need to, we can, we can do this in full generality. It's not too bad. Um, these are the Ramsey equations that we derived before. Okay. Um, let me just write these out. Okay. So, uh, prime of K minus Delta plus rho. All right. So this is in, in the full generality, including that epsilon U, which can be, which is if, function of the utility function uh, it's computed from the utility function which can be a, a function of C in general okay um, that you might think is gonna trip us up because it's some weird function but it's actually not so bad because you'll see all right so um, okay so let's see uh, we want to linearize this okay so the way we linearize this and actually well th this is what I have written in the notes we, we probably want to move that lowercase C over to just uh, because yeah, it's gonna it's gonna give us a hard time anyway. But also, I'm gonna jump to the next page and rewrite this because we need to like have it on hand. All right. So this was what I wrote for k. Let's see. All right. And then that c dot equation, I'm just gonna move the c over. So we're gonna have c over epsilon u of c, some weird function of c, but it doesn't matter for reasons you'll see in a second. Um, and then delta plus rho. Okay, so this is our Ramsey system. Now, uh, how are we going to linearize? So remember, two coordinates are k and c. I'm writing them k and c order because k is generally our x dimension in the phase diagram. So that's, that's just a way to the canonical order would be kc. All right, so um, also Kansas City. Um, so there's that too. Uh, so then um, we want to linearize this. We need to, we, to get the Jacobian, we just have to do the, the four different options, right? So we take the derivative of that first equation with respect to k, evaluate a steady state, do the same thing for the first equation. For C, that's the off diagonal. Then move to the second equation, derivative for K, again, I guess that's the other off diagonal, and then the, the diagonal C, C. All right, so which is those four, which equation you're doing and which variable you're doing. That's your Jacobian, all right? And then, but, but it's important also to do it at steady state because otherwise it can be very complicated in general. All right, so <clears throat> the Jacobian. Um, well, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it like, you know, J sub K sub K. So this is the, the K dot equation derivative with respect to K. And I'll go through it and combine everything at the end. All right. So uh, what's this going to be? Um, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'll just write uh, the, the first index is 
which output equation, and then the second index is which derivative. Okay, so um, all right. So then this is going to be f prime of k. All right. Now th th this is where stuff you know you want to remember that stuff cancels oftentimes. Okay. So in this case, the derivative is going to look like that. Now the c, remember c is is just another variable. Like it's it you know. In general, your c zero depends on your k zero, but like in this space, it's just it doesn't it's not a function of k, right? So uh, it just drops out, all right? Um, so we get this now. Like I'll write star. I mean, wait, we're we're applying this at steady state, okay? We know in steady state, if you just look at that c equation up there, that f prime of k is equal to delta plus rho. So this is just delta plus rho minus n plus delta. The deltas cancel, and you get rho minus n, our old friend, which actually I'm going to call rho tilde, okay, which we know is is positive. Okay, the rho tilde thing is just notation. I don't feel like writing rho, rho minus n. It's our effective discount rate, okay? So that was, you see how you evaluate it. In general, it's sort of complicated, but then at steady state, it's actually just a, a familiar thing that we actually know the sign of, okay? All right, um, we're going to call that rho tilde. Good, okay, so then... Uh, the upper right, you know, uh, k equation with respect to c, very easy. It's a minus one. That's it. All right, because it's just a minus c. With respect to c, the k's cancel now. All right. So don't get tripped up on taking derivatives of one coordinate with respect to the other. Right. These are these are separate coordinates. Uh, let's do um, no. Okay. Well, let's do c c k. This is the bottom left now. The C equation derivative with respect to K. Um, okay, so this one is well, it, it's kind of complicated in a way, but you know the C is just constant. That first uh, uh, coefficient basically on the front with, for a, for a K derivative, and then the, the derivative that's inside. Well, that's just F double prime of K. The delta plus rho they cancel. All right, so okay, like that. All right, so that's actually going to be it. It's not super friendly. We don't even really know what it is necessarily, but that's going to be it. All right, I'm I'm calling that in the notes in a simpler era. I I called it Q. I'm going to call it Q because it's still Q in the notes. Now Q has taken on this whole new thing. Um, let's just ignore that. Okay, so it's Q. No secret signals or anything like that. Um, and that's what it was in the notes last year. All right, so it, it's uh, it's actually sorry, I'm gonna call it negative q, because f double prime is negative. I'm just doing this for for signing things. F double prime is negative. Okay, so that term is actually gonna be negative because the elasticity is positive. You can see our it's theta. C is positive, hopefully, uh, and then f double prime is negative. So overall, that thing is gonna be negative. So I'm gonna define q as being positive and then the term that that entry is minus q. All right. Okay, so that's um, I don't really know how to interpret what that you know, what is c times the second derivative of the production function over the elasticity? Eh, I don't know. Um, but but we at least know the sign. Okay, we know that that term is negative. So that's basically good enough for us. Uh, last one, cc. Okay, so uh, this one is like, it's kind of easy and not easy at the same time. Because think about taking the derivative of that, that C dot equation up top with, with respect to C. Okay, the, um, the second term in brackets is a constant, right? That's going to come out as a constant. And we know that in steady state, that term is zero. So we already know this term is zero, okay? We could take the derivative of C over the elasticity as a function of C, which is itself C u prime over u double prime. Uh, it's basically the derivative of u prime over u double prime. It's ugly. I don't know what it is, but it's it's like uh, I don't. Know, you, um, yeah, there there is something sometimes you see called the coefficient of like prudence or something like that. I don't know. They have they have funny words for the these higher order elasticities, but we don't need to worry about it because it's zero. Okay, so it's whatever it is. It's that thing times zero. So let's not trouble ourselves with it. All right. So those are the the entries. Okay, and I, I've. They're either a constant, you know, zero or minus one, or just an effective discount rate, or this Q thing. All right, so that's it. This is J. I'll call it J star. It's J at X star. Um, 
So that's going to be just like collating things together. In the top left was Rotilda. Over in the top right was minus one. Bottom left is minus Q. And then bottom right is zero. OK. Cool. Um, all right, so that's actually, it doesn't look so bad uh, that we're, we're kind of hiding stuff in, in the Q coefficient, but, but we know the sign of everything and, and that's good. All right, and so now we can um, think about this a little bit more. Okay, so uh, this is our A, right? So now we, we basically, at this point, um, this is our A, and this is already in uh, tilde space, right? We're recentered, we're looking around steady state, okay? Now we just have to think about this eigenvalue vector stuff, okay? We need to figure out what are the eigenvalues of, of J star and, and see what that tells us, okay? Um, so, uh, this is where, um, okay, so, so in general, we know how to compute eigenvalues, right? Um, you just the determinant of, uh, you know, a, well, let's call it a minus lambda, sorry, i times lambda. Uh, equals zero. Okay, that's just like, you know, textbook, boom, you can plug it in. In this case, you know, you're looking at the, you'd look at the determinant of rho minus lambda, minus one, minus q, and minus lambda. You'd compute it, so zero equals uh, that. That's gonna be, um, this, minus one, sorry, minus q. zero. Is that right? That seems right. Yeah. Uh, let me just make sure I didn't screw up the sign because I did this before. Minus Q. Yeah, that seems right. Okay, so then or, you know, if you if you want to think about it like this, it's equals minus Q. Right. So, um, okay, and that's a quadratic equation. We know how to use the quadratic formula. Um, and we can do it, right? It doesn't simplify it that much. It, it, like you don't, like the, the discriminant doesn't turn out to be some nice number, but you know, we can live with it, all right? So um, yeah, and, and I mean, you know, so it's gonna be what? lambda squared minus rho tilde lambda plus Q equals zero. Okay, that's in the standard quadratic form. You have A equals one. Okay, and so that's gonna give us uh, this b squared minus 4ac ah sorry let me think this should be a minus i think no it should be a minus sorry Um, yeah, because there's yeah that, that this should be a minus q, hence this should be plus four q. All right, so that's what we get, and then over two. Okay, so that that's sort of just the brute force approach. We do use the determinant uh, approach, calculate the determinant, this quadratic equation because we're in two dimensions here, um, and we can find this this eigenvalue. Okay, so this this is like there's two eigenvalues, okay? And the, it's the plus and the minus of this, this quadratic uh, uh, formula outcome. All right, so, for, and, and even from here, we can see that for the plus one, that's clearly gonna be positive. It's something positive plus the square root of something also positive. Uh, and the minus one is gonna be negative because like, if Q is zero, right? Then that negative one would be rho tilde minus the square root of rho tilde squared, which is just zero. Uh, as Q gets larger though, it's gonna push it down. Okay, so if Q is positive, that other eigenvalue is going to be negative. Okay, so these these two eigenvalues, one is going to be negative, one is going to be positive. All right. Now, yeah. So that we we can do that. All right. So the other thing which I, which I think is is interesting though is I mean there's also you can kind of use um, sort of these tricks that are out there. Okay. So so um, did I? I can't remember if I talked about this last time. Let me see. 
Want to talk about eigen stuff? No, I didn't. Okay, so um, there's some truths out there about eigenvalues that you can use, okay? And one of them is that um, think about uh, the determinant of, let me think. Yeah, so, so think about the determinant of A. Okay. Now, we know, remember with, our, with these eigen decompositions, okay? Um, we can write A as V lambda V inverse. Okay. And then um, the thing, you know, with determinants, you can distribute them multiplicatively, right? So this is going to be the determinant of V times the determinant of lambda times the determinant of V inverse, okay? All right. And then the other thing about determinants is that the determinant of the inverse is one over the determinant. Okay, so that basically this determinant of v here is something, and this is one over the determinant of v. So they're going to cancel. Multiplying now, now that we're in multi regular multiplication world, scalar multiplication world, where uh, what's a commutative, we can move things around. And so this is actually just going to be the determinant of lambda. Okay, and and actually lambda is is a is just that diagonal matrix of eigenvalues, and so this is just. You can write, I don't know if you've seen this, this is like the, the analog of a, of a sum, right? From like i equals one to n. It's just the product of all the eigenvalues. You've seen that before, I think, right? So, um, okay, so then the determinant of A is just the product of all the eigenvalues. Or conversely, if you want to know what's the product of the eigenvalues, you can just look at the determinant of A, right? Not the determinant of A minus this thing, that not this thing, but just the straight up determinant of A, okay? Right, so if we, if we look up here, you know, the determinant of our a, which in this case j star, um, is going to be well rho tilde times zero zero minus minus q times minus one three minuses so we get minus q. All right, which is less than zero. Okay, so our determinant in our case is minus q. All right, so that means it's negative. Okay, and in our case, what that means is that lambda one times lambda two. Is minus q negative okay so even even here right we can see that the 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 product of the eigenvalues is negative therefore supposing that what's well, it's strictly negative so first of all uh we're we're, we're, we're kind of assuming that's strictly negative which is fine it's, it's the kind of strictly concave utility or strictly concave production function um it's strictly negative that means they're both not zero and they have different signs they have opposite signs Right, so so from that we can already conclude that uh, they're both non-zero and they have opposite signs. And uh, which one is positive and which is negative is is indeterminate because um, there's no with eigenvalues there's no order. Right, lambda one does not correspond to c or to k. Okay, it's just a it's a solution to that eigensystem up top. But it's it, there's just because there's two of them and that that two is of course because it's a two-dimensional system. There's no mapping between one and two in C and K. You could flip the order if you want, and everything that we did above is still true. Okay, so so that's another indeterminacy. One is the order, the other is the scale of the eigenvectors. Okay, so it's important to keep in mind that you're not gonna get any guidance on that. You can just choose whatever is easiest, okay? Um, all right, so that's the determinant trick, right? The, the product of the eigenvalues is the determinant of the matrix. And then there's also the trace trick. So traces are wild. In my opinion, um, and there, uh, so the traces. Remember, the trace is the sum of the diagonals, right? Um, and you know, same approach. Okay, so the trace of A is going to be the trace of its equivalent eigen decomposition. Okay, now the thing about traces is that you can, you can't, um, you can't distribute it like a determinant. You can't reshuffle them, but you can cycle them. You can like take the guy from the end, put it on front, and move everything like this. You can, you can like 
cyclic cyclic permutations, I think is is what Wikipedia says. So we could do that. Like we can cycle forward or backwards. It, they're going to be equivalent in this case. This is going to be equal to trace of. Let, let's let's bring the um, v in front to the end. Okay, so we're going to now lambda is up front, v inverse v. Well, then that, those just cancel, and so we just get the trace of lambda. Okay, because so, so this cyclic permutation thing with traces turns out that gives us the trace of lambda. Now the trace is just the sum of the eigenvalues. Uh, so because the lambda is diagonal, that trace is just the sum of these eigenvalues. Okay, so that, the determinant is the product, the trace is the sum. Boom. All right. Um, now in our case, okay, I'll just write it up here. The the trace result would say lambda one plus lambda two is equal to the trace of a or j star. I'm gonna pop back in here, which we can see is rho tilde plus zero, which is rho tilde. Okay, so the sum is rho tilde. All right, so it's kind of neat. We, we, we know what the product is, we know what the sum is, okay? Now, um, you know, we, we, we found the eigenvalues already with this determinant approach, right? So like the textbook approach. Th this actually, from these two equations, this knowing the product and knowing the sum, you can um, substitute in and solve for the lambdas too. Right, if you if you, uh, you know, sub in for lambda two in that first equation, so it's lambda one times lambda two, which is rel tilde minus lambda one is equal minus q, is equal to minus q. All right, that's basically. I mean, that's you can see that that's the same thing that we had up there. You solve for it, um, you're gonna get something. All right, um, and then uh, if you do the other substitution. Then, then you actually get the same thing. Yeah, at, at this point, it's a quadratic equation, and you could just you get a plus or minus solution. Okay, so you can see that, that those two, the determinant and trace equations, imply basically um, the uh, in the two dimensional case they imply uh, the same solution as as the the traditional approach for finding eigenvalues. Okay, so um, yeah, so the, I guess the key here though is like especially the determinant thing, you don't necessarily have to solve them exactly. You can just find their product, and, and in some cases, that's enough at least to talk about the the general stability, right? So, just from doing this first thing right here, we said we well, you know okay, this is this is a saddle path solution. Maybe that's all we care about, right? Maybe we don't care about everything else, all right? Um, and that's that's going to be good enough, all right? So, um, okay. In, in the sense of being a 2D system or, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So this tells us there's one uh, negative eigenvalue and one positive. So the, the dimensionality of our stable manifold is one. Therefore, we're gonna have that, that, um, that saddle path, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that, that, that'll give us the picture, sort of it'll, like prove that our picture was correct, basically. Okay, so um, all right, so now that's all well and good. We have we have our, our eigenvalues still. Right, we can call them plus or minus, or we can call it lambda one two, not one half, one slash two. Um, so and let's say let's say one is the plus and two is the minus, just arbitrarily. Okay, so uh, or without. Loss of generality, if you will. All right. So um, the other, we don't know the eigenvectors yet. Okay. We may want to know the eigenvectors. Okay. Because essentially, uh, the the eigenvectors allow us to map from hat space into tilde space. All right. So hat space is this weird, you know, like well behaved, but you know, transform space and tilde space is actually kind of just what we're interested in, the, the real thing. Okay, so, um, okay, but, okay, so, so, but how do we do that? How do we, how do we, like, get a real answer out of this? What if, what if we want to say we start somewhere and we, we I want to know the full path, all right? So we can do that. Um, we just have to be careful about transforming things properly, all right? So, uh, okay, so we have our positive and negative eigenvalues. Let's, okay, so we're now we're saying that um, lambda one is positive. Okay, 
uh, and lambda two is negative. Right? I, I, this is just without lots of generality. I'm, I'm just kind of saying this is going to be the case. So this means that remember the the lambda one that x hat has to, x hat one has to be zero at zero. Okay. So now we're saying if we if we want to think about the stable manifold, then we need x hat one of zero to be zero, which is going to imply that x hat one of t is just always zero. Okay. All right. Um, sorry, I guess, why am I saying, let me think here, uh, yeah. okay, I'm, I'm, just, just to clarify for myself and for you guys, that in hat space, there, we, we, we don't have a mapping between one and two and C and K. It's a hat space is, is an abstract space that we're moving through, okay? When we map into tilde space, then we're, that's when we can start talking about C and K. But when you go to hat space, you kind of lose this mapping. It's, it's kind of both at the same time, okay? So X1 hat, though, is going to correspond to the first eigenvalue and eigenvector, right? Because we constructed hat space with the eigenvectors, right? So, so that's how we're tying things together. Um, but there's, we lose, we don't have a mapping between C and K and one and two is what I'm saying. All right. Just like with the eigenvalues. Okay. So then the X one, because that I said that the Lambda one is the positive eigenvalue has to be zero. And then X hat two of zero. Well, I don't know. Let's just say that that's some Z. It's just some number. Okay. So that's, <clears throat> that's just like where we are. All right. That's where we start. Okay. And, um, we could, given um, a K0 and a C0, you could find Z going through. That's certainly doable. It's, it's, it's a lot of work for not a lot of um, return, I would say, but you, you can find some Z, okay? So, and essentially the idea is our stable manifold is one dimensional because one of them has to be zero. And so Z is that, that index, right? The one dimensional means you can be indexed with uh, there's a mapping from a, a one-dimensional continuous variable, that's Z. So Z is tracing out our stable arm, okay? Um, and that also means that X hat two of T is uh, you know, Z times E to the, well, yeah, I mean E to the um, lambda two times T, which is gonna converge to zero, okay? All right, so cool. All right, so now we we want to map this back into tilde space, right? That's what we want to do. Okay, and if we want to map back into tilde space, though, we also we kind of need to know the eigenvectors to get that v that v matrix. Okay, um, so we can do that. Um, Okay, so remember the, the eigenvalues, <clears throat> lambda one slash two, look like this. Okay, those are our eigenvalues. All right, so now what are our eigenvectors gonna look like? Um, so you wanna be careful here, one, because uh, the there's an, that indeterminacy of scale we're going to want to worry about that, okay? Um, but, yeah, I mean, other than that, we should be fine. All right, so remember our eigen equation is this, right? A, J star, they're the same thing in this case, all right? So then writing it out, okay, remember, this is, and so this is equal to J star, that A is equal to J star. Okay, so our J star, row tilde, what do we have? Minus one minus Q and zero. Okay, so that's our A. And here, uh, okay, so I'm gonna, I'll just write V1 and V2. Really, it's like V11 and V12, but 
it's it's the same. Okay, and then and then over here, uh, we're gonna have lambda i v one v two. All right, so maybe I should. I'll write the little i's here. Okay, because because there's which eigenvector it is, and then there's also whether it's the first or second index of that eigenvector. So there's there's four of these things. You know, I'll write a superscript is which eigenvector, which corresponds to lambda i, that i there for lambda i, and then one, two are the coordinates. Okay, I could write it on both on the bottom, but it just gets messy. All right, so, um, okay, so this is two linear equations. Okay, we can just multiply it out. All right, and see, we'll just multiply it out and see what happens. Rho tilde vi1 minus vi, oops, vi2. Okay, is going to be equal to lambda i v i one. Okay, um, is that what I want? Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, and then yeah, we, okay, and then the other one, the other equation is minus q v i one. Okay, then the the you know, plus zero times v i two, so zero, uh, is equal to lambda i v i two. Okay. So, um, that's a two there. All right. So then, um, what can we get from this? Uh, now, remember that these eigenvalues are their scale is indeterminate. Okay, so for both of these equations, you can see if you double v1 and v2, it, if they're still true or false or whatever they are. Okay, so that's that's sort of indeterminate. Um, now, uh, the other thing is, because they're indeterminate, really, we only care about the ratio. Okay, we only really care about something like uh, vi1 over vi2, right? Otherwise, I mean... It, that, that, that fully characterizes what we're interested in with regards to these eigenvectors. It's, it's basically the ratio of these two indices. Okay, so you can, from the second equation, you can just get that directly. Vi1 over Vi2 is going to be lambda i over q. Minus q. Minus that. Okay. So that's it. That's, a, that's all we need. Okay. The other, if you plug that into the other equation, I think you get this. What is that? I think it's equivalent. Um, it's equivalent. Yeah, you either get one equals one or you get something that's equivalent to the definition of lambda. Like you might get like a re-derivation of, of lambda i. I, th I think you get a re-derivation of, of, of lambda i basically, of the definition, which, which then would eventually reduce to one equals one. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so this is all we really care about. Okay, so then, uh, so, th so then if, if, you have, if you have that ratio, I mean, it's sort of like the easiest thing to do is to just say that this thing is now just lambda i minus q, right? You could do uh, lambda i minus lambda i over q and one, okay, right? So, so, so because that v i one over v i two is, is equal to this minus lambda i over q, you could just say that that's vi1 is that thing, vi1 is this ratio here, and vi2 is 1. Or you could just note that that thing itself is a ratio and, and say that the, the eigenvector is going to be lambda i and minus q, right? You can see that the ratio of, of vi1 to vi2 in this case is lambda i over minus q. So you could shift factors up and down if you want, but this seems like the easiest thing, right? It's just say, well, that's a ratio of 2. Let's, let's do that, okay? So... Um, that's what we're going to do. So now you can see that the, the eigenvector corresponds to the eigenvalue, right? It's a, it's, it's a function of the eigenvalue itself, right? So that, that's by design, right? They, they're, they come in pairs, right? So, um, okay, so then uh, what does this all mean? Um, well, so, so we now have both eigenvectors, right? Which means that we can construct the Death Star, i.e. the eigenvector matrix, okay? Um, and combine it together, and then we, we have what we were looking for, right? 
but it's a good Death Star or something because it's helpful. Um, all right, so that's going to be lambda 1 minus Q, lambda 2 minus Q. Really, just stack it up horizontally, all right? And we know we know the lambdas are, you know, that equation up there, lambda 1 and lambda 2, all right? Now, the, the order here is um, important because... One and two are, are important, right? One has to be zero and two can be not zero. So that, that's that's critical, right? Um, so you can't, once you've decided on an order, you need to stick with it basically, all right? Okay, so uh, yeah, so now where are we at? We, we've, we've decided on the X hat system, right? We, we decided that X hat is gonna be basically zero Z, right? Just to, that's a, that's a way to parameterize it basically and say that the first index has to be zero because it's a, the unstable one because lambda one is positive and then z is like can be whatever it wants, okay? And you can put I guess you could think about of t's being on both of those two, right? And then we know what z does. Z converges at rate lambda two, which is negative, okay, to zero. Um, we want to get x tilde, okay? So so now x tilde. Well, first of all, x tilde is, is a is a real thing that we know is um is is, is just k tilde c tilde, right? Which you're calling x tilde, right? That's that's the the actual Ramsey deviation from steady state, which is which corresponds to our x tilde in mathematical notation, um, and remember that's equal to v times x hat, right? That this part here is just like when this is just like from the definition of these transformations, and now that we have our eigenvector equation, uh, eigenvector matrix, we can actually implement this. Okay, so then it's just a matter of plugging it. So it's lambda one, lambda two, minus q, minus q, and then uh, x hat is zero, z. Okay. Um. Yeah, and so just left hand side is k dot k tilde and c tilde. Right hand side is is this matrix equation which we're going to multiply out. All right, so we can just let's just write it like this. We're going to continue being in matrix land, but these are just column vectors when when we compute them. Um, first row lambda one times zero, lambda two times z. So z z times lambda two. Okay, uh, second row minus q times zero minus q times z. This is, I, I can't, I need to make it so that the z is second. Uh, this is gonna be lambda two times z. Okay, so that's the two, boom. Okay. Um, All right, so, so this is kind of it, all right? Because what, what have we done? Okay, we, ha we haven't talked about how you get Z, but suppose you just start with some Z. Okay, you start, in so you, you start with some Z. Um, you can now say, here's K tilde and here's C tilde, right? Now remember that lambda two is negative, Q is positive, so that both of these, these uh, K tilde and C tilde are negative if, if Z is positive, okay, right? So if Z is negative, they're both positive, okay? So, but they have the same sign, right? What is that? That means you know, remember, you know, a million years ago when we when we did the steady state stuff. You know, they have the same sign, meaning we're we're either over here or over here, right? Which which means that the stable arm is passing through diagonally, right? So that's telling us the stable arm is it, it looks like like how we drew it, right? So it's one dimensional, it's passing through diagonally from low low to high high through that steady state. That's that's what we can get from the signs. Uh, the fact that lambda two is negative and minus q is negative, um, and then we can, uh, yeah, yeah. So we're are we're because we did the Jacobian around steady state, we're already in that that centered space. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so yeah, k is k star plus k tilde basically, right? Um, and so and then the other thing is you can even get the slope of that that stable arm around steady state. Uh, the slope is, you know, it, it's 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 rise over run. It's the the deviation in the vertical dimension, which in this case is c, which is minus q, 
over the deviation in uh, the horizontal dimension, which is k tilde, which is which is lambda two. Okay, because they both skip, they both move with z. That slope is going to be minus q over uh, lambda two, which is which is actually positive. Okay, right. So you, we can actually get the slope, right? So that I think, I mean, that that's a thing that you can actually we we know both q and lambda two, right? Um, and and lambda two is itself. It's just the minus term up here. Uh, it doesn't fully, I mean, you can factor through the Q. It, it doesn't really cancel substantially. I mean, it, it's positive. We know it's positive, okay? And it's a thing we can compute it. It doesn't turn into something particularly pretty, but it'll do. Um, and so, yeah, so we can get the slope. So I think that's cool. I mean, it's like we get steady state. We know the dimensionality of the stable manifold. We know the direction that we're going, right? We even know the slope uh, linearized around steady state. Okay, so we, we have a very good understanding of what's happening around there. Okay, and it, you know, you zoom in here, right, on on that area, right, it, that's gonna look like you sort of that linear system, the those two rays that we had crossing at the origin, right? When we zoom in and it, and close enough that it's sort of approximately linear, it do, it, it looks like that linear system. And that, that's that's the sort of the, the stuff that we're using, okay? And then we know there's this stable arm passing through it, okay? So this is like zoomed in in the steady state, okay? So um, that's the idea. Okay, so the, the only loose end we have really is, is Z, okay? Right, and so the way, the way you get Z um, is... Well, so so you know you'd have so this is um, x hat of zero. It's just evaluated at a time zero, okay? Uh, remember that x hat is uh, v inverse times x tilde, which is you know, it's v inverse times. Um, <clears throat> X tilde is, is in this case just yeah k tilde is zero c tilde is zero okay so there, there should be like a zero here all right so so you can you can eva like evaluating transformation at zero then you get it the, the problem is you need you do need to invert v okay so if you knew k zero and c zero let me think here I know actually. Um, x hat actually no you don't need to invert v maybe it's not so bad um, so yeah you do yeah okay so you get yeah you, yeah yeah yeah, because we're going the other direction. So really, oh, because the determinant is the product of the eigenvalues, probably. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. So this should, yeah. Okay. So th this may simplify a lot. Yeah. I mean. The brute force way is is just take that v that we computed, invert it. It'll probably simplify a lot because of what you're saying, Garrett. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I wonder. What I, so yeah. I mean, I don't know, maybe you guys can work that out and see see what happens. Um, yeah. I'm not sure exactly how it plays out, but yeah. But basically, you know, if you're given some k tilde c tilde zero for whatever reason, that's a space in like our our you know in here you know some point in this phase space. You can the, the brute you know the brute force method is you, you calculate um, v inverse okay which I mean v inverse is just going to be you know one over lambda one lambda two uh, what is it it's like minus q something like this right I forget you flip the diagonals and now maybe the, you, know, you invert you negate the diagonals. Okay. Yeah, I mean we're not gonna do it. We're not gonna compute it anyway. So let's let's just say that that's 
that's probably right. Um, so then you get this. You get some transformation, right? So that's that's going to be v inverse is going to be something like that. So it's certainly something that we can compute um, with a little bit of uh, effort, and then just multiply those through, and you'll get uh, your your initial z. Okay, so um, now you'll get it. You'll get an you'll, actually you'll get an initial x hat, right? You get an initial x hat, which may or which will in, you know generically the first index will be not zero. Okay, so actually, um, let's see. Yeah, so generically, the first index will be not zero. Um, and so it, it'll give you a relationship between uh, for the, the fact that the first index is zero will give you a relationship between k and c. And in fact, it's going to be that they just have this ratio here, that their ratio is q over lambda two that meaning they're on this stable arm, okay? Um, and then the second one will, will indicate, you know, how far, um, how low is your K or how high is your K and, and correspondingly your C, right? So so one of them is gonna say, you have to be on the stable arm. It's just gonna, that's gonna, and, and the stable arm, remember, is a function uh, uh, from, from K to C. And the other one's gonna tell you like sort of your, your displacement horizontally in some sense, okay? Um, or it'll index your, your horizontal displacement, uh, basically. Okay, so um, yeah, like you know, if if, if you, I, I think, yeah. So like, you know, if, if if you just look at this matrix equation, that top row is going to be minus one over lambda two, and then q minus q, right? And when you multiply that through, it's going to tell you, it's basically going to tell you that your K and C have to have the ratio Q over lambda 2 or minus Q over lambda 2. All right. And then that, well, actually, that's, that's going to be minus 1. Okay. The ratio is going to be, uh, I think, minus Q over lambda 2. All right. Um, we can work it out maybe next time. Okay. Uh, and then the second one, though, is going to tell you what is Z as a function of your K tilde and C tilde. All right, so it'll it'll say z equals k tilde and c tilde. All right, but um, yeah, so so essentially, it's it's both a way to find z and also it's a restatement of this constraint that you have to be on the stable arm. Okay, um, that that's what I'll say. And so so w what you really get, honestly, what you really get is for a given k tilde, it'll tell you what your z is more or less, and then it'll also tell you what your c tilde should be. To be on the stable arm, okay. So I, I yeah, I was saying you just choose a point. You can't. You're not really choosing a point if you if you have that zero constraint. It, it it'll tell you what your c tilde is, and it'll tell you for a given initial k tilde, what is the corresponding z. That's that's the right way to say it, I think. Um, okay, so yeah, I don't know. I, I it it's it's not. Like, I'll work it out and just kind of like. Or maybe, maybe we, you guys should work it out as an exercise, okay? Let's let's work it out, and next time we can come back and compare answers, okay? So um, it, it's a little heavy on the algebra for for not so, too much return, I think, um, but but it it'll basically tell you about that stable arm, okay? So all right, that's it. I'm out of time here, um, and uh, yeah. So the homeworks it's out there in the wild. Um, I hope you're enjoying it, um, and I'll see you on Thursday. All right. Anything else before before we depart? Seems like you guys are pretty content. All right. Cool. See you on Thursday.